Hi, this is Sanjeev Dev Malik from Asia News Channel and we have here with us the most young, dynamic and dashing ambassador of Lithuania to India, His Excellency Mr. Lemonus Talat Kalpsha, sharing his views on the forthcoming EU presidency of Lithuania. His Excellency, welcome to India. Thank you so much. Well, in a couple of weeks time, the European presidency will be taken over by Lithuania. It's always a sort of ritual for the government to present the program for the next six months. What is Lithuanian agenda on the presidency EU? What are the key issues for Lithuania to lead Europe? What are the priorities that will be set during the Lithuanian presidency? That's what we're going to talk about today. As this is your first presidency for EU, which is a very historic and significant milestone for your nation, how do you feel about it? and what benefits Lithuania is likely to reap and how important is EU presidency for you? Well, thank you for asking this question. Speaking about feelings, of course, all of us are very much excited and forward-looking with this huge task and enormous responsibility which will be lie on our shoulders. Well, and speaking about benefits, what sort of benefits Lithuania will have of the presidency? Let me outline four key points. One is, uh, it is important for our internal uh, domestic political uh, self-perception because uh, for 20 years Lithuania had been struggling hard to become a member of the European Union and NATO to integrate uh, fully into all European Union institutions and structures like Schengen Zone and uh, we hope that soon Lithuania will also become a member of the Eurozone uh, so presidency is sort of, of a tag which gives uh, a quality to a new member state and the period from which new me member state is, as we sometimes joke, is no longer considered an old member state. Uh, also it is a possibility to learn because membership of the European Union is an ongoing process so there's so many bureaucratic and also administrative and political things which you have to learn. Uh, thirdly, we also look forward to presidency of European Union as a possibility for our citizens to know more about uh, the EU. And finally, well, we cannot uh, not tell about uh, the economic benefits which presidency is also bringing. Uh, just to, to mention a few facts, for example, more than 2,000 events are going to take place during the presidency. 2,000 events you're talking about? Yeah, it's wow. more, more than 2,000. In Lithuania, a couple of hundred of them, of them will, will take place. So just believe how many, uh, how busy the hotels, the restaurants and, and all the infrastructure of the country will be. So this is also the benefit which is, has to be taken into account. That's there. And I'm sure with uh, a lot of people and focus being on Lithuania, not only progress, uh, financially or uh, economically, but in other areas as well. Well, absolutely. For other countries in Europe and also globally to learn Lithuania more, this will be a very great opportunity because presidency, again, is a flag which you hold for six months. And I'm sure uh, to Lithuania being a small Baltic country, but uh, it is capable of taking uh, a humong humongous task like holding the UEU presidency. Do you want to uh, say something about that, sir? Well, I... I think that we are ready for presidency already today, especially from the technical point of view. We've been working on that very hard for the last uh, three to four years. Uh, now, what is still uh, not know for, known for us is the full scope of the agenda, because agenda is a rolling issue. Some of the items of the agenda we will take over from the Irish presidency so but maybe we will talk about this during, during the uh, how is Lithuanian presidency likely to steer the economic uh, European economy towards growth and create jobs well indeed there are three priorities that live general priorities that Lithuania is uh, raising for for its uh, presidency one is credible Europe Number two is growing Europe, and then finally number three is open Europe. So these three general guidelines for, for, for us uh, will take us uh, during the period of our presidency. Now as for growth, uh, indeed uh, European Union now is in a particular situation. We know that some countries, member states of the European Union are not in the best economic shape as we would like them to see. So. 
there is a huge responsibility to inject a stimulus of, of growth, uh, reinvigorate the economic credibility of the European Union. Uh, with that, what, what comes uh, to my mind, what, what will be the key issues we, we can already disentangle uh, today, one is the long-term budget of the European Union. Mm -hmm. So negotiations have started, they are already in the process. Um, one draft was agreed among member states, but it was rejected by the European Parliament, as you perhaps know, so negotiations are ongoing. and. Our colleagues from Ireland, the Irish presidency, is now handling that issue. Uh, in case that the negotiations with the Europe, European Parliament go successfully, mm -hmm. uh, for us what will be important to adopt uh, other remaining legislation for this budgetary process to start from January 1st, uh, 2014. Uh, to give you a clue, there are 56 pieces of legislation which still have to be adopted in order for our budget to be fully operational from January 1st next year. So this is uh, one of the uh, major uh, objectives that will fall on, on our shoulders. Well, secondly, also completion of single market. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not a finished business. It's still an unfinished business. This is an ongoing business. process uh, for uh, all the businesses. Yes, and many, many, many of the legislative directives which have been adopted in the past are not yet fully implemented, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to the services market. Uh, integration of our um, transport uh, communication networks. This is still uh, going to, to happen. Uh, the creation of a digital single market. This is again a very ambitious and important agenda for us and especially for small and medium enterprises in all of European Union to create a new stimulus for, 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 for their interaction, for their growth. And finally, which is important for our part mm -hmm. of Europe, where, where I come from, is the creation of single European uh, energy market and, and integrated European energy policy, because some member states till today are separated from the rest of the European Union. They do not have pipelines or electricity grids connecting them to, uh, to other member states. So that creates unequal uh, conditions for competition economically. Equal opportunity. For uh, yeah, just for example, like Baltic states, which import 100% of their gas from one single supply. So, for, for, for that <laughs> yeah, reason, that. you know that you have a very tough negotiations on price, and usually with, with that monopolistic situation, you do not have too many options. Too so, many options. the point is to create alternatives, to create opportunities, and, and stimulate growth. So, this will be, of course, one of the objectives of our presidency. presidency. His Excellency, what are the Lithuanian presidency's views on? cross-border EU free trade? Well, this is a very important aspect of uh, all EU functioning. Uh, European Union realizes, indeed, the uh, European Union realizes that uh, more than 90% of global growth in the next 20 years will be created outside of European Union. Mm -hmm. So for EU to be on the edge, for, for, for the EU to have uh, possibilities of augmenting its uh, prosperity, it is very important to trade. And, and trade with the partners outside the European Union is, is a very I important uh, objective. Uh, um, there is uh, a certain estimate uh, done by the European Commission that with the signature of free trade agreements with key trading uh, areas and key trading blocks uh, globally, the uh, European Union could add up to 2% of its annual growth and create more than 2 million jobs. So this is a very uh, important uh, issue. European Union is now in uh, the process of negotiating uh, free trade agreements with some yeah. of its neighbors. Neighbor, east neighbors? Uh, east neighbors in particular, but not also east, in the south as well. Morocco, for example, is one of the countries we mm -hmm. are uh, now negotiating free trade agreement. Uh, free trade uh, uh, agreement negotiations are already underway with uh, India. Uh, they are almost completed, except of few chapters which still remain to be closed. Uh, this summer, European Union expects to open uh, free trade negotiations with the United States of America. So that again... Is this the same EU-US uh, negotiations which are on at the moment? 
Uh, well, there are many negotiations, uh -huh. but on trade, uh, we have not started uh, negotiating with tax. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, the process in the pipeline or checking for the possibilities, agreeing on the terms of negotiations. So that is underway. And uh, with the EU, US summit, which is going to take place in June, in June. we hope. So the, the negotiations on free trade will be launched. There is also free trade negotiation agreement already started with Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, some initial uh, steps have been taken to negotiate free trade with uh, Southeast Asian countries, ASEAN bloc. So European Union is actually expanding its free trade arrangements and with that we do hope that that will be good not only for the European Union but for the global prosperity as well. His Excellency, how is Lithuania going to use the presidency as a platform to generate interest in Lithuania and takes opportunity in promoting Lithuania as an attractive destination for tourism, for investment and business? And this is a well, very good opportunity no matter what. Like. Well, you are right, although openly we cannot speak that presidency is our uh, tourism promotion agenda. But no, it's, as it's a, one of the platforms. I mean, there's a, no harm in it. Like. Yeah, but there's a side effect of that and positive side effect of positive that. Of, effect. of course we can speak about that. Well, we expect that uh, several thousand uh, EU officials will visit our country during uh, one half year. So this is really a lot. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a great challenge for our hotel business sector, for our tourist agencies as well. Uh, usually it happens so, and this is a proven fact already, that people who come to Lithuania, they usually want to come back. So with so many well, EU officials visiting our country, we, we do also think that perhaps at least part of them will want to come back outside their official duties with their families and, and spend some time in Lithuania. Not all events will be concentrated in, in, in the capital city. Some of them we also plan to organize outside the city. So these are also historical places because Lithuania is a country with more than 600 years of, of, of statehood and then more than 1,000 years of, of, of history. So anywhere you go, you, you face uh, historical monuments and also landscape nature which is very wild untouched and, and that what attracts most of the people from from, from across from, the globe from, from or just the Europe? Now from across the globe as well because we do have increase of, of, of tourists now to, to Lithuania also from such faraway countries as Japan. His Excellency, what are the steps the Lithuanian president, presidency will strive to make progress towards sounder public finances in the EU and to strengthen the ground for financial stability which is required to fully restore the EU's economic credibility? Well, as I mentioned, one of the priorities for Lithuania, global priorities for, 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 for Lithuania during the presidency will be restoring trust in Europe or a credible Europe, as, as we say, because credibility is a very important very part of, of EU policy. Now, there have been uh, certain policies in the past which undermined EU's credibility and we so really spend a lot of time and effort and energy in trying to restore that, especially when it comes to the banking sector. Mm -hmm. So for Lithuania, during Lithuanian presidency, one of the uh, important issues will, will be to promote banking union uh, inside the EU. Uh, we are have much advanced in, in creating single market, but and there is a next step which are we going further, is, mm -hmm. is integration of fiscal and monet monetary policies. Of EU. So when it comes to the banking union, there are specific legislation which we are going to, to, to take up. Uh, one of that, for example, is single resolution mechanism, which would be very good for, for those depositors in, 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 in the country which uh, turn up in, in risky banks. And then if it goes something wrong, so we have uni unified legislation across all of EU, how do you deal with Mm -hmm. uh, with that problem. Also, in this kind of insurance uh, you can yeah, have so for your... Uh, well, it's, it's generally a policy in the European Union that your deposits in the banks are insured up okay. to 90%, but then again, the countries, when they compete, they they use they different, different procedures, and, and also when they are in, pro in problem, in trouble, so they use different uh, procedures how to repay or recompensate uh, the depositors. So uh, again, to have a single unified policy so that, for example, if there is a problem in one of the bank in, in 
particular mm -hmm. member state of Europe, so deposits are withdrawn, but then again, if that bank collapses, it can affect all of the European Union. So we don't, we want to avoid that, and we want that there is a very clear procedure how banks operate in such situations. So this is a very uh, important initiative. Also, when it comes to sound the economic governance, mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, exactly during our presidency, the so-called uh, two-pack legislation will, will be uh, started to imply uh, to implement uh, in, 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 in the European Union. What does it mean? For example, that all budgetary projects of member states will be sent in advance to the European Commission and European Commission will make assessments of, of what risks such a fiscal policy of a given member state can uh, have. And if the European Commission says that, for example, your financial fiscal steps are too risky, uh, so the governments will be obliged to take mm -hmm. that into account before putting the budget to vote for, for the national parliament. So this is really new thing. It shows that integration is ongoing, so we have more centralized approach and we have like more coordination of, of our fiscal policies as well. And, and also, once a specific measure that the initiative uh, is on the table to uh, establish a European public um, uh, prosecutor office, mm -hmm. again, which would allow for tax evaders to okay. really be hunted across all of the European Union. So you're going to have one system for the whole of EU? Well, this is a start of debate. Lithuania mm -hmm. is going to really put this item on the agenda of the so European in a way, Union. The, so the European we'll will be sharing the data with each, each and every country for tax evaders. Well, I cannot tell at the moment what the mm -hmm. final outcome of that discussion will be, mm -hmm. but yes, the general idea is you if you pay taxes, so governments uh, need to have a right to see how that taxes is really collected so that there is no tax evasion or tax havens in, inside the European Union in particular, which as we saw in some member states, it just mm. inflates the bank Inflate. sector. And, and, yeah, and, I understand and, and because a lot of people wouldn't want no to stay in France just for the matter of tax. Uh, the taxes are too high, and the rather they would go to a neighboring country like Belgium and settle on there. Thought there were other countries in the south, for example, who were very attractive to for keep tax. your money well. in there because mm -hmm. the rules were lo looser or stricter. How how would you define from? from but but again. When you had problems in the banking sector and then when depositors started to withdraw that money, it just appeared that the GDP of that country is not yes. even sufficient to cover all, 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 all the money. Well, His Excellency, what are the measures the Lithuanian Presidency of the Council of the EU will seek to steer the decision-making process as an honest broker and ensure its continuity and the inclusion of all relevant partners? Being honest broker means being honest being broker, honest. which means that you don't push your national agenda. And that is very important. Mm -hmm. So if personal national agenda, I would say. State related, state personal related, yeah. national <laughs> agenda, <laughs> of, of, of course, uh, because that would be egoistic and that would also put a certain constraint on sure. your abilities to strike um, the compromise among member states in case that their interests diverge. So for us, it is important to really know our partners, again, as I say, this is a process of, of learning. Um, my minister is now traveling very actively through the capitals of, of, of the European Union, trying really to establish points of contact everywhere so that when we uh, start this negotiation, uh, start this, this presidency duty, we, are, we know well which people to talk and also what are their preliminary positions mm -hmm. are. So this is very important to know. His Excellency, you said open Europe. What exactly did you mean by that? Well, first of all, this is a message of the European Union to the outside world that the European Union is not a closed, secluded club of prosperous countries which just take care of their inner business. Uh, European Union does understand there is a world outside its limits and European Union understands very well that its own prosperity and its own future and security depends on how secure and prosperous will be the countries beyond its limits. So for that reason European Union is developing a number of policies to approach its partners in other parts of the world. One of them is enlargement policy. 
And my country was once part of that enlargement policy, and look where we are now, full-fledged members of EU. Now enlargement policy mainly relates to the uh, countries in, in Western Balkans. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, European Union has mediated very successfully in negotiating a solution between Serbia and Kosovo. Uh, and that agreement, once implemented, it really uh, opens the door for Serbia to launch accession uh, negotiations for the membership in the European Union and for Kosovo to, uh, find, to, to really start negotiations on stabilization and association agreement, which is a first step towards future prospective membership. So this is a really great accomplishment. Also, there are in, uh, accession negotiations already ongoing between European Union and Turkey and also European Union and Montenegro. So our ambition again as a presidency is to close as many chapters in that, that negotiation. Within that, this time span of six months. Exactly, exactly. So we most certainly we will not be able to close all of them, but to move it from the point where we are now by closing more chapters and, and, and approaching this moment of the full conclusion of negotiation is really very important. Well, then there is Eastern Partnership Policy, uh, which is very important for, uh, again, my country, because we live on the eastern perimeter of the European Union. So here again, there, there are six countries which are struggling to work out uh, a close relationship with the European Union. So with part of them, uh, negotiations are already ongoing for, for free air trade. So we do hope that with Ukraine, for example, the agreement will be signed during the summit of Eastern Partnership, which will take place in, in Vilnius in November. That other countries, again, like Moldova, Georgia, will be able to finalize free trade agreements again in Vilnius during our presidency, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, when it comes to trade, again, uh, as we have spoken a, a little bit about this, this is again a message of openness that we want more trade and we want trade with as many partners as, as possible. Um, so here a number of initiatives is already undergoing. Uh, and then uh, when it comes to development policy, because again European Union is the largest uh, donor in the world, um, also in terms per capita and in an overall volume of, of aid which it provides for third countries. So here again, the objectives are rather uh, ambitious. And in addition to that, European Union is also working to, to, to have its borders secure, but not fully shut. And mm. again, so the concept of smart borders here is very important and, and European Union is now moving not only towards uh, coordination of, of the actions border guards in Lithuania, Poland, other countries take place around the entire perimeter of the European Union, but also creating a digital border, as we say, so that with a single card you can approach, you can you know, swipe your card, and perhaps your electronic visa would already be in place, and, and you can enter European Union. and institutions, relevant institutions can really follow, track you down in, 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 during your travel and once you enter and leave the EU. So this is, this is ambition for the future. So we are actually now at the moment of making the first step towards, well, towards discussion, agreeing, approving, and then implementing that in practice. That's great. Yeah, so, so in a way, this presidency has a lot to achieve from this, within the six months, span of six months' time. Uh, that's true, that's true, and we will do our best to make it as progressive as possible. <clears throat> the EU presidency is a huge undertaking, but if successful, has the potential to help enhance Lithuania's reputation amongst EU partners and generate positive publicity across Europe. With over 100 meetings, conferences and events, scheduled to take place in Lithuania, the domestic economy can also expect a presidency-related boost. Your comments, His Excellency? Absolutely. We see the upcoming presidency mainly from the positive side and well, despite the, or in addition to the political uh, agenda that we have, there are economic issues that might also be 
uh, facilitated by the presidency. Even now, if you go to Vilnius, you would see that certain streets are, are being renovated. You would see, for example, the construction of our old castle uh, being well underway. Uh, many conference sites are equipped with the latest up-to-date technologies. Well, this is, Lithuania used to have large conferences in the past, but we have never had conferences with that scope and of that intensity, which means that basically every week you will have an event taking place and every time it's 27 or should I say 28, because from January, July 1st, Croatia is becoming member of European, of European Union, so 28 delegations always present plus Commission Secretariat and you know, many, many people the whole around. Of who's who in the Europe is going to be there. Maybe. Yeah, so really to enhance the smooth functioning of, of the process. So you need cars, you need your airport be in order. Well, we actually started renovation of VIP hall in, in, in the airport. So it's another undertaking, undertaking which will remain in Lithuania after presidency is finished. So there, there are many good sides of the presidency as well. Last but not the least, According to you, what role can media play for a successful Lithuanian EU presidency? Well, nowadays you cannot underestimate the role of the media, of course, and although sometimes people joke that good news are only bad news, so <laughs> we do expect that during our presidency all news coming from Lithuania will be mainly good news. Uh, and, and good news meaning that we are close to an agreement, we have reached an agreement among member states and of course in this context uh, the role of the media is to reflect the process and also what we hope would be very important is, is to facilitate the consensus building among EU member states. Uh, well we will be 28 countries around one table with 28 media assets at least and of course each country will have their number of their com companies present all of them will be hunting for a particular detail in, in the process but our interest it as the overall picture remains uh, as it is in its essence and that the news that people receive in, in respective member states um, show that European Union is really working for good I mean this is the major objective